So I have shared with you all my favorite shows on Cartoon Network, but Cartoon Network isn't perfect. And some of their shows are, well, they're crap. Our strained bladders have made us a weak and oppressed race. <laughs> Bladder. <laughs> For the record, this was really painful to research. I had to go back and rewatch all of these shows to make sure I was being 100% accurate. And it was a challenge. Some of these shows made me physically cringe. Do you look so dumb talking to your imaginary characters? Kalzara, I will destroy you! This is the top 10 worst Cartoon Network shows. Number 10. The Cramp Twins. I never really bothered to watch this show when it was on Cartoon Network. It just didn't look that appealing to me. The designs of the characters were off-putting and very obtuse, especially the teacher. Extra thick! There are also these lines around the characters that I find distracting. Like, are they having a seizure? What purpose do these lines serve? I am all for stylized design, but I don't care for it here. To be fair, the personalities of the characters and the writing itself are not terrible, but it's quite boring. I found myself looking at my phone, wondering, when's this episode going to be over? There was only one joke that I laughed at, and I don't even know if it was on purpose. My, 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 Wayne, uh, what a magnificent rack. Did you make that yourself? Number nine. Teen Titans Go. I can only imagine that you guys are shocked that this is so high up on my list, but when you take the show apart, it's not as bad as you think it is. That does not mean that it's perfect though. It's far from it. Teen Titans Go mainly suffers from a rough history. It was the successor to the original Teen Titans, an action show that was very popular and never truly had a conclusion. Instead, the fans got Teen Titans Go, and both Cartoon Network and Warner Brothers have not looked back since. Now hand over that remote, nice and slow like. My butt's got an itchy trigger. The characters, writing, and animation are not terrible. There are even some episodes where I laugh out loud. But then I remember what this show took away from me, and I get salty about it. To make matters worse, Teen Titans Go! even makes fun of the fact that Teen Titans was replaced. But to be fair, they also make fun of themselves. That looks like us, but better! These Teen Titans were about character development. Drama and heart! I used to be so much cooler! In combination with how often the show is aired and how hard Cartoon Network pushes it, it's no surprise why so many viewers don't care for Teen Titans Go. It also suffocates other shows on the network. I'm going to do a separate video about Teen Titans this month, so we'll talk about them more in greater detail later. Again, it's not a horrendous show, but it's absolutely a shadow of its former self. Shall we do the carpool? It was the four-way tie. Number 8. Dude, What Would Happen? Again, another show I didn't really watch when it aired on Cartoon Network. I was still bitter at the network for removing cartoon shows and replacing them with live action content. I mean, it says cartoon in your name. Why would you push this type of stuff? I watched a few episodes though, and I did not really find it appealing. The hosts of the show are over the top and get on my nerves. The camera angles are crappy and they have too many jump shots. Also, you can tell that Cartoon Network was being very cheap with this show. I want to be fair though, the show isn't absolute garbage, but I think it would be more at home on Nickelodeon. It fits the feel of the channel better, but for Cartoon Network, absolutely not, especially when it's a replacement for its animated programming. Number 7. Johnny Test As this list goes on, my forgiveness will start to run out. Now I have a little for Johnny Test, but <sighs> not much. Johnny Tess aired in 2008 and arrived when the old shows on Cartoon Network were starting to retire. So instead of Dexter's Lab and Powerpuff Girls, we were getting this cheap stuff, and I mean that. You can tell that there was a drop in animation quality with Johnny Test. In my eyes, Johnny Test was a complete ripoff of Dexter's Lab. They just kind of reversed the roles of Dexter and Dee Dee, 
and made a few other alterations. But a smart redhead with an annoying sibling? Yep. That's been done before. I also find the sound effects to be obnoxious. They use way too many, and the show is known for its addiction to whip cracks. Stop chewing gum! Nothing good comes from chewing gum, Johnny. Just sticky bubbles and tooth decay! Ed, Ed, and Eddie use a lot of sound effects, but they made them work. They were well timed, but for Johnny Test, it's just overkill. Lastly, I find it strange that the love interest for Johnny Test is a girl that looks like him, and her name is Sissy. What? What's that about? Is there some Freudian stuff going on here? Number 6. Out of Jimmy's Head This show was a spin-off of the Cartoon Network movie Reanimated. Cartoon Network pushed it as this big deal that was alike to Who Frame Roger Rabbit. Guess what? It wasn't. There are barely any animated characters in the show. It's funny how Cartoon Network advertised this show by featuring the animated characters, but they only appear a few times in each episode. Also, they don't really serve any purpose. You could remove them, and the show functions just fine. To make matters worse, there's a laugh track, and they use it way too much. Like, the audience is laughing during moments that aren't even purposely funny. On your left column, in your left windows, air all around you, air all around you. <laughs> The only time I laughed at this show was when there was an attempted assassination. Hey, fair play! Over here! <laughs> Number 5. Almost Naked Animals I don't understand the appeal of characters that are ugly or gross. Ah, we just had a bit of bad luck. This year is gonna be different! Like, do kids enjoy this stuff? Do they like cartoon characters that are in their underwear and have their nipples showing? I know that gross looking characters were popular in the 80s and 90s, but I think that trend died out in the 2000s. But then again, kids appear to love these creepy and graphic cartoons on YouTube, so what do I know? I do know though that Almost Naked Animals is trash. Despite its fast pace and LOL random humor, the show itself is very boring. I did not laugh at all while watching it. It's just stupid humor for the sake of being stupid. Number 4. The Problem Solvers Speaking of LOL random humor, we got this show. Problem Solvers is truly difficult to watch. It features some of the worst character designs I have ever seen in a show. Like. They actually hurt my eyes. I'm so glad I found you, problem solvers. What is it? I took my elementary school class in the weird amusement park. They all went out of the roller coaster and came back like that. The stories are fast paced and feature rapid jokes that aren't even funny. It's just weird for the sake of being weird. Mmm, pizza. Awesome. Mmm, give me some pizza. Okay. Oh, boy. Pizza. Ed, Ed, and Eddie was a strange show, but I was able to follow it. I was able to invest in the characters, but I don't care for the cast of problem solvers. They are just obnoxious and unpleasant. The first season of the show aired on Cartoon Network, but the second season never aired. It eventually arrived on Netflix, and that was the end for the show. Cool, I'm home. Mm, look more awesome now. <laughs> Dinosaur! Mmm, pizza's so good though. Thank God. The show was originally pitched to Adult Swim, but was passed off to Cartoon Network. Honestly, I believe Problem Solvers would have had a better chance on Adult Swim, since weird shows are kind of a norm there. But for Cartoon Network, nope. It's just too random, and the colors are way too much. I mean, I appreciate that they're trying to do something different, but it just doesn't work. Number 3. Secret Mountain Fort Awesome From the makers of Uncle Grandpa, we have Secret Mountain Fort Awesome, a show about obnoxious and gross-looking monsters going on adventures. It's odd. I don't actually hate Uncle Grandpa. 
I don't really care for it, but it's not a terrible show. But this, oh my god, it's utter garbage. Just like Problem Solvers, the designs of the characters are awful. One's a talking butt that farts when it walks around. This show is full of stupid poop humor, which I really never cared for. Some people might like it, but not me. It's just too much. Tango, 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 Tango. 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 number one, two. I can't believe I'm saying this. I hope I never see another pizza again. Regular show had a crazy cast of weird looking characters that found themselves in crazy adventures. Secret Mountain Fort Awesome kind of follows the same structure, but it fails where regular show succeeds. The characters are unappealing. The humor is LOL random and doesn't flow well. And the stories are crude. Number two. Annoying Orange. For most of the shows on this list, I watched them with a boring look on my face, or one of disapproval. But for Annoying Orange, I was actually shouting at my TV. I mean, good God, how many terrible elements can one show have? I don't shuffle, I bounce! Whee! Sometimes I roll! Rolly, rolly, rolly! <laughs> Cut it out! First off, it looks awful. I could do a better job with special effects with my own green screen. Second, the writing is atrocious. The show is proud of its puns, but I wouldn't even call them that. Puns require some kind of connection to what you are talking about. For Annoying Orange, they just shove a word into a sentence and call it a pun. And I wear it every year to honor them on Fruit Dependence Day. Fruit to what you say? Fruit Dependence Day. And finally, the humor is incredibly crude. Just lowbrow comedy that comes across as obnoxious. Annoying Orange originally came from the internet and it should have stayed there. People have tried to bring online content to the mainstream before, and it usually fails. But to be fair, even the internet version of Annoying Orange is terrible, so it wasn't like it was destroyed when it came to television. And number one, the worst show on Cartoon Network is Powerpuff Girls 2016. This show embodies everything wrong with Cartoon Network. Yeah, I get it. People are angry at Teen Titans Go, and I can relate. But what Powerpuff Girls 2016 did to the original, it's about as insulting as you can get. There is absolutely no respect for the original source material here. BFF Bubbles? Buttercup's nose. Please don't. Ew. Again, Teen Titans Go is not perfect, but at least it maintains some of the traits of the original Teen Titans. Side characters and villains appear. Also, they were able to use the original voice actors, but for Powerpuff Girls 2016, it's as if they went, how can we make the opposite of the original Powerpuff Girls? Oh, I know. Ignore that they are superheroes and make it more slice of life. Relax, Bloss. You made one bad call. It's not a big deal. I fail all the time. And look at me. Whoa. Now, I realize that the original Powerpuff Girls were not all action episodes, but we never forgot that they were superheroes, that they were there to save the day. They would go out and fight bad guys and monsters, and it really rocked. My sisters and I, despite being from different demographics, absolutely love the show, but now it's just terrible. Very few elements of the old show remain in the new one, and the ones that do remain aren't being used properly. Powerpuff Girls 2016 is more about being hip, modern, and quirky, and that was not what the original was about. When I initially saw the intro for the new Powerpuff Girls, I was excited. It looked really good, but the show does not deliver. Also, they never even went back to the original creator of the show for help. They did it without him and his crew, and they messed it up. 
The stories are not interesting, and the action is super boring. So that's what that stuff does? Girls! Plan Z43! I don't think it's bad for a show to try something new. The new DuckTales mix things up with its rebooted version, but they still maintain the core values of the original. But Powerpuff Girls 2016 does not care about its source material, and that's insulting to the fans of the original show. It's funny, because the show barely airs now. It was a failure, and Cartoon Network knows it. Yeah, they're trying to build some attention with this fourth Powerpuff Girl. But once again, the original source material already has a fourth Powerpuff Girl. Heck, it has a fifth. They crapped on the legacy of the original, and they weren't able to capitalize on the reboot. Hopefully, shows like Samurai Jack and DuckTales can inspire Cartoon Network to never go down that path again. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and subscribe for future content. Also, I want to give a shout out to my top tier sponsors on Patreon. Blair, Isvan, Chad Butler, Screenflare, Mr. Skids, and Illegally Sane. Thanks to all who support me, and thank you all for watching.